Hello, so today what we're going to be doing is going over a really quick algorithm. This is the first non-repeating character algorithm, and you can do it the same way in a string or an array. In our example today, we're going to use a string. Um, so basically the idea is that let's say that you have a string like this, one, two, three, four, five. What you're wanting to check to, is to see what is the first non-repeating character in this. Now none of these characters repeat, but let's say that we have, have it like this, and then maybe laced within here somewhere we have a six. So this six doesn't repeat. So that would be the, the element that we would want to return. Now let's say that we had a seven back here that didn't repeat as well. We would still want to return the six because we want to return the first non-repeating character. If, if none of the characters repeated like this, we would just want to return negative one as a falsy value. Okay, so that's what we're going to be returning. Uh, not super hard to understand conceptually, but let's talk about some of the implementation of it. So whenever you're dealing with something like this where you have a string, let's just say that this is our string, and you're, you're, wanting, to keep, um, you're wanting to keep relationships between these elements within this string, you might be tempted to use uh, what's called a nested for loop. So I'll write this in pseudocode to explain. So let's say that we have for loop here that does some loop stuff. And let's say that we have another for loop right here that does some loop stuff. And the idea is that you would have like maybe an I right here and a J right here. The I sits where it is in element zero and then the J increments all the way through. Then the I increments, oops, the I increments and then the J comes back and it goes here and then it increments through the entirety of the uh, array or string. So basically what you're seeing is that it's a lot of calculations just to check to simply see if an element exists or doesn't exist because what we would be doing is checking to see well does this exist does it repeat you're keeping a relationship between two different elements um, the problem with that is is that since it's so many comp com uh, computations that would fall into what's called O of n squared big O of n squared time complexity and that's called exponential time complexity so that's way too expensive and too much too much too many calculations for what we're trying to do here. So you want to find a better, more efficient solution. So what we're after is what's called an O of N time complexity, O of straight up N. So the N right here, what that is in reference to is the length of the string or the array. So this would have its N, its length would be three. So the calculations for the O of N squared to, to fail in worst case scenario would be O of N squared calculations. Whereas this one, the, the solution that we're going for is just O of N, so just the length of the array. So N squared versus N. You can understand that N is far smaller than N squared. It's smaller by, exponentially smaller, so it's, it's less calculation. So that's what we want to go for right here. So let's try to think of a way to implement that. Now, uh, let me explain this a little bit really quick too. Some people get confused as to having two for loops versus having nested for loops. So let's just say that we have a function here again. This is in pseudocode. Let's say that we have a for loop right here that does something in here. And then we have another for loop that sits parallel with it within the uh, lexically within the uh, execution context of the function. And this does something as well. Now the difference between this and having it nested would be that this technically on line 14 would actually be O of 2n. Um, 2n meaning the length of the array or the string. So 2n would be far less of a change to the root of n versus n squared. n squared is a huge jump in computations, but 2n really isn't. So a good rule of thumb when coming up with O of n and explaining time complexity to someone is that you can drop any of these letters that aren't exponents or any of these numbers that aren't exponents. So you can just drop that and it's really just O of 2, uh, really just O of 2n becomes O of n. Um, because like I said, there's a huge difference between having this and then having this. You understand? So that's the idea. So let's try to figure out some implementation for this. Uh, what would be, if we were wanting to get an O of n time complexity uh, answer, one good way to think about having relationships between elements in an array or in a string that you're iterating through is to make an object. So we can make an object that would keep track of the amount of times that each element appeared. We could write an algorithm that would say, hey, if a 1 appears, 
we'll count the amount of times that that appears. If a two appears, we'll count the amount of time that appears. Then we could just loop through the object and check to see if any of the values are equal to one, right? So that's basically how our algorithm is going to go. So let's start writing it out. You'll, you'll get it whenever I start writing it out if you're a little fuzzy right now. So let's go function, and I'll write this in old school. Uh, I won't use an arrow function because you really don't need to right here. So we'll go on line three. This is going to be passed in a string. And then what we want to do, first we want to set up uh, set up an empty object. Set up an empty object. And uh, this is something that we can put elements in and keep track of our the count of our elements. So we'll just go const obj equals an empty object. Cool. So then we want to do our we want to loop through the string and uh, populate object, right? So here we'll go for let lm of str. So this uh, this for variable name of string or array name, uh, you can use, if you're working with a string or an array, you can use the word of. If you're working with an object, you need to use the word in right here. And we'll, we'll work with an object in a for loop later, so I'll show you that. So we'll go for let of, let lm of str. We'll say, and I'll write it like this first, but then I'll refactor it to make it a little bit more uh, semantically, a little bit better. So we'll go for let lm of str, and we'll say if obj at lm, if there is an object at lm, if that's not a falsy value, if there is an object at lm, then we'll just change object at lm to equal object at lm plus one. Otherwise, here's where we'll write our else. And like I said, I'll refactor this later. Uh, then we want to just uh, initialize obj at lm to equal one, right? So what this code is doing is basically saying, hey, if there's an object in the object, if there's a property with the lm that we're passed in, then we'll equal, we'll increment it by one. Otherwise, we'll we'll just set it up as one. And then we'll just to check this, let's just return the object right now just to see what's up. So let's create a string. We'll go const uh, str equals, and we'll just go one, two, three, four, five. It's just simple string. We'll console.log. Uh, what was the name of that? I didn't name the function. It's an anonymous function right now, which is not right. So we'll call it a um, function um, first, or just we'll just say non-repeating. There we go. So we'll call it non-repeating, and we'll, we'll log it down here. Non-repeating, and we'll pass in that str right here. And let's go into our integrated terminal right here, node scratch.js, and run it. So you can see it returns us an object, and each one of the elements has a count applied to it. So let's change this to where the five repeats, and then let's run it again. And you can see that the five has a two. Its, it's, it's property is five, its value is two. OK, cool. So now what we need to do, since we've set that up, and like I said, I'm going to do some refactoring, so just hang in there. So we'll say let, and let's loop through that object and find the first non-repeating. So it would be the one is the first non-repeating character. We'll go for let lm, and since it's an object, instead of of, we use in, let lm in obj. Now that'll give us access to that lm. We'll say if obj at lm, if that's equal to one, we want to return the lm. Otherwise, we want to return negative 1. Negative 1 meaning that none of them repeat. So let's run this. It should return 1 because that's the first non-repeating and cool. That's what it returns. It returns a 1. So let's change up this string to make it a little bit easier to understand. Let's just go 111, 222, 333, 444, then a 5, 666, 777, 888. So this should return the 5 because it's the first non-repeating character. So let's go right here and it returns a five. Let's say that we put a uh, nine down here that doesn't repeat. And would it still return the five? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. And let's say that the five and the nine repeat. So let's say five repeats and nine repeats. And 
Let's save that and run it again, and it should return negative one for a falsy value, which is what it did. And the maximum amount of calculations that this would have to be, again, is the two n. So this is a good solution as it's written. However, this block of code right here is a little bit kind of useless code. You can write it a lot more succinctly than that. So let's go back here. And instead of writing an if statement and an else statement, let's just go um, obj at lm equals obj at lm plus one or one. And let's see if it runs again. <gasps> should return negative one. It does. Let's take away this five right here. So it should return five. It does. Let's take away this nine. It should still return five. It does. Okay. So this is working. Basically what this line of code is doing right here on line eight, it's saying, hey, if there's an object at Elm, we're going to increment it. Otherwise, we're just going to initialize it to one. That's what this succinct line of code did, other than the, rather than having the if, the else, and, and repeating a lot of code. Um, so this is a pretty good solution. Um, the time complexity of it is good. And uh, yeah, I hope this helped. All right, take it sleazy.